Hey, Aileen here. I know you've been studying your earned value equations, but you know how to get the earned value questions right on the PMP exam that require no equations. By the end of this video, you'll know how to get every earned value interpretation question right on the PMP exam. Thanks for coming. Let's review how to get some earned value questions right related to the PMP exam that are not mathematical. These are the topics that we're going to cover in the following video. Cost variance, cost performance index, schedule variance, schedule performance index, estimate at completion, variance at completion, estimate to complete, and the to complete performance index. As we review these topics, we're going to talk about interpretation questions only. We're not going to talk about any math. So I suggest that you review many of my other earned value videos in my earned value playlist if you want to see mathematical questions related to earned value. So we're going to begin with cost variance. And again, I'm not even going to show the formula or you might say the equation. Cost variance, I'm using my own words, how much the project is varying from the budget as of today. I think most of us realize if the cost variance is positive, the project is under budget. If the cost variance equals zero, the project is on budget. And if the cost variance is less than zero, the project is over budget. So I think we all know that. Let's add a little more to this with an example. If the cost variance is a positive $800, it means you spent $800 less than planned for the work completed as of today. You're running under budget by $800 as of today. If the cost variance is zero, the project is on budget as of today. And if the cost variance is a negative $800, it means you spent $800 more than planned for the work completed as of today. You are running over budget by $800. Pause the video if you need to review this again. Remember, cost variance does not look at how much money should have been spent as of today. Cost variance is not about schedule. Cost variance looks at how much you spent versus the work complete. Let's look at several sample questions. The cost variance is negative $500. What does this mean? Pause the video and answer the question. For me, the first thing I do is I ask, is the question about cost or schedule? And it's about cost. And then I ask negative 500, is that a good or a bad thing? And I know that's real simplistic, but that helps me. A negative variance is a bad thing. Let's look at answer A. The project is ahead of schedule. Well, cost variance is about cost. We don't know about the schedule, so A is wrong. B, the project is $500 over budget. That's a bad thing from a cost standpoint. I think B is right. C, the project is $500 under budget. That's wrong. The project is behind schedule. We have no idea because we only know the cost variance and not the schedule variance. Let's look at another question. The cost variance for your project is negative $500. What does this mean? Pause the video and answer the question. When I look at the question, I ask, is it, is it about cost or schedule? And it's about cost. And I ask negative 500, is that good or bad? Well, that's bad. A, you need to complete $500 more worth of work to complete the project. Well, we have no idea. Cost variance doesn't tell us about project completion. It looks at how much we've spent versus how much work is complete. B, you have spent 500 more than you plan to spend as of today. No, that's incorrect. B is relating more to schedule or schedule variance. C, there should be $500 more work complete than you completed as of today. Again, C relates more to schedule. D, 
you spend $500 more on the work completed than you plan to spend. So D is the correct answer. Pause the video and go through it again if this question doesn't make sense. The cost variance for your project is $500. What does this mean? Pause the video and answer the question. First I ask, is it about cost or schedule? And it's about cost. $500, that's a positive number. Is that good or bad? Well, that's good. A, the project is ahead of schedule. We have no idea because we don't know the schedule variance. B, the project is $500 over budget. No, our cost variance is a positive number. That's a good thing. It means C, it means the project is under budget. D, the project is behind schedule. We have no idea because we don't know the schedule variance. The cost variance for your project is po positive $500. What does this mean? Pause the video and answer the question. First I ask, is the question about cost or schedule? It's about cost. $500, a positive number, is that good or bad? That's good. A you spent $500 less than you planned for the work complete. A is what a cost variance of positive $500 means. B, you have completed $500 more work than planned as of today. B relates to schedule variance. C, there should be $500 more work complete than you have completed as of today. C relates to schedule variance. D, you have spent $500 more than you plan to spend as of today. Again, D relates to schedule variance. So we've talked a little bit about cost variance. Let's move on and talk about the cost performance index. Cost Performance Index. In my own words, the Cost Performance Index is how well the project is performing from a cost standpoint as of today. Most of us are familiar with the idea, if the CPI is greater than one, the project is under budget. If the CPI equals one, the project is on budget. If the CPI is less than one, the project is over budget. So I think we all already know that. Let's take it further through a few examples. If the CPI is 1.8, it means you have 80% more work completed than planned for the money spent. And the key phrase there is for the money spent. If the CPI equals 1.0, the project is on budget. If the CPI is 0.8, it means you've completed only 80% of what you plan to complete with the money spent. Now let's move on and look at four sample questions. Oh, a few things to remember first. CPI does not look at how much money should have been spent as of today. CPI looks at how much you spent versus the work complete. Now we'll look at four sample questions. The cost performance index is 0.5. What does this mean? Pause the video and answer the question. I ask first, are we talking about cost or schedule? We're talking about cost. And then 0.5, is that a good or a bad number? Simplistically, it's a bad number. A, the project is ahead of schedule. We don't know what the schedule is because we don't have the schedule performance index. B, the project is over budget. B is definitely true. C, the project is under budget. C is definitely false. D, the project is behind schedule. We don't know because we don't have the schedule performance index. Let's take a question maybe a little bit harder. The cost performance index for your project is 0.5. What does this mean? Again, I ask, is this about cost or schedule? It's cost. And is 0.5 good or bad? It's bad. Pause the video and answer the question. 
A, you need to complete 50% more work to complete the project. We have no idea. Cost performance index looks at a period of time, okay, or a better way to word it, it looks at where we are today, not the whole project. B, you have spent 50% more than you plan to spend as of today. B relates to schedule. C, you completed only half the work planned to be completed as of today. C relates to schedule. D, you completed only half the work planned based on money spent. D is the best answer. And make sure you really understand the difference between C and D. C looks at how much work is done compared to time. D is the right answer, how much work is done compared to money spent. Here's an easier question. The cost performance index on your project is 1.5. What does this mean? Pause the video and answer the question. Is the question about cost or schedule? It's about cost. 1.5, is that good or bad? Simplistically, that's good. A, the project is ahead of schedule. We have no idea because the cost performance index is about cost. B, the project is over budget. This is not true, or you might say it's false. C, the project is under budget. That's the true answer because our index is good. It's greater than one. D, the project is behind schedule. We have no idea. We would need the schedule performance index. Let's look at one more cost performance index question. The cost performance index for your project is 1.5. What does this mean? Pause the video and answer the question. First is the question about cost or schedule. It's about cost. 1.5, is that a good or bad CPI? That's a very good CPI. A, you completed 50% more work than planned based on money spent. Well, A is a good thing and it relates to money spent. I think A is the right answer. B, you have completed 50% more work than planned as of today. B is wrong, B is about schedule. C, you have completed 50% less work than planned based on the schedule. C is wrong, it's about schedule. D, you completed 50% less work than planned based on money spent. Well, D does relate to the, a cost performance index but not one of 1.5. So now we've reviewed four questions related to the cost performance index. Let's go on to the next topic. Schedule variance. In my own words, how much the project is varying from the schedule as of today. Most of us know if the schedule variance is positive, greater than zero, the project is ahead of schedule, if the schedule variance equals zero, the project is on schedule. If the schedule variance is less than zero, the project is behind schedule. Let's take this a little further through three examples. If the schedule variance is negative $800, it means you plan to complete $800 more work than you did as of today. We're behind schedule. If the schedule variance is $0, the project is on schedule as of today. If the schedule variance is a positive $800, it means you completed $800 more work than planned as of today. Let's review four sample questions. The schedule variance for your project is negative $500. What does this mean? Pause the video and answer the question. Is this about schedule or cost? It's about schedule, negative 500, is that good or bad? Well, that's bad. A, the project is ahead of schedule. No, because A is a good thing. B and C address over and under budget. We have no idea because we're talking about schedule variance. D, the project is behind schedule, yes. I hope that was an easy question. Let's look at one a little bit more difficult. The schedule variance for your project is negative $500. What does this mean? Pause the video and answer the question. Is this about schedule or cost? 
Schedule, negative 500, is that good or bad? Well, that's bad. A, you need to complete $500 worth of work to complete the project. Again, we have no idea. That's not what schedule variance tells us. B is about being over budget. The project is $500 over budget. We have no idea because we don't know the cost variance. There should be $500 more work complete than you have completed as of today. Does that relate to schedule? Yes. And is it a bad thing? Yes. Do you have spent $500 more than you plan to spend as of today? D is about cost. So C is the best answer. If this was tricky, go through it again. The schedule variance for your project is $500. What does this mean? I'm hoping this is an easy question. Is it about schedule or cost? It's about schedule. $500, is that good or bad? Well, that's good. A, the project is ahead of schedule. That sounds great. B, the, the project is $500 over budget. We don't know. C, the project is under budget. We don't know. D, the project is behind schedule. That's false. We have a positive schedule variance, meaning the project is ahead of schedule. The schedule variance for your project is positive $500. What does this mean? Pause the video and answer the question. Is this about schedule or cost? Schedule, positive 500, is that good or bad? Well, that's good. So we're looking for a good thing from a schedule standpoint. A, the project is $500 under budget. No, we don't know because we don't know the cost variance. You have completed $500 more work than planned as of today. Is that about schedule and is it a good thing? It is. See, there should be $500 more work complete than you have completed as of today. C is a bad thing. C is wrong. D, you have spent $500 more than you plan to spend as of today. D is a bad thing. D is wrong. Now we've reviewed four questions on schedule variance. Let's move on to the next topic. Schedule performance index. In my own words, schedule performance index is how quickly the project is progressing compared to the schedule as of today. Most of us realize if the SPI is greater than one, the project is ahead of schedule. If the SPI equals one, the project is on schedule. And if the SPI is less than, than one, the project is behind schedule. Let's look at a few examples. If the SPI is 1.8, it means you've completed 80% more work than planned, or you might say than scheduled as of today. If the SPI is 1.0, the project is on schedule as of today. You have completed 100% of what you plan to complete as of today. If the SPI is 0.8, the project is progressing at 80% of the planned rate as of today. You have completed 80% of what you plan to complete as of today. So you might want to pause the video and read through these again. Let's look at four sample questions. Schedule performance index for your project is 0.5. What does this mean? Pause the video and answer the question. So is this about schedule or cost? It's about schedule. And is this good or bad? This is bad because it's less than one. A, the project is ahead of schedule. No, because the index is less than one, so the project is behind schedule. B, the project is $500 over budget. C, the project is $500 under budget. We don't know because we have schedule performance index, not cost variance. D, the project is behind schedule. That's the best answer. The schedule performance index for your project is 0.5. What does this mean? 
pause the video and answer the question. Is this about schedule or cost? It's about schedule. 0.5, is that good or bad? That's bad. A, you need to complete 50% more work to complete the project. We have no idea. That's not what schedule variance tells us or schedule performance index tells us. It doesn't tell us about the whole project, what we need to complete the project. B, the project is $500 over budget. We have no idea. C, the project is progressing at half the rate expected. This is the answer we're looking for. So 0.5, or you might say one half, we're moving at half the rate expected. D, you have spent 50% more than you plan to spend as of today. We don't know. D relates to cost. The schedule performance index for your project is 1.5. What does this mean? Pause the video and answer the question. Is this about schedule or cost? Schedule, 1.5, is that good or bad? Well, that's good. A, the project is ahead of schedule. Yes, that's true. B, the project is over budget. We don't know. C, the project is under budget. We don't know. D, the project is behind schedule. No, it's not behind schedule because the schedule performance index is greater than one. One more question. The schedule performance index for your project is 1.5. What does this mean? Pause the video and answer the question. The question is about schedule. 1.5, is that good or bad? Well, that's really good. A, the project is 50% under budget. We have no idea because we have information on schedule, not cost. B, you have completed 50% more work than planned as of today. So that's a tricky one, what do you think? Yes, that's what's happening. Let's go to C, there should be 50% more work complete than you have completed as of today. No, C is a bad thing, it says that we're behind schedule. D, you have spent 50% more than you plan to spend as of today. Schedule variance isn't about spending money. Okay. Schedule variance is about how much work has been completed versus how much work should have been completed as of today. Great, so now we've reviewed the four sample questions on SPI. Let's move on to our next topic. Let's look at our next four topics and then a whole group of sample questions. We will begin with estimate at completion. In my own words, how much we estimate the project will cost in total based on what we know today. If the EAC is greater than the BAC, and remember BAC is budget at completion, we expect the project to overrun the budget. If EAC equals the BAC, we expect the project to complete on budget. If the EAC is less than the BAC, we expect the project to underrun the budget. The second topic we'll take right now in this group of four, variance at completion, VAC. In my own words, how much we estimate the project will overrun or underrun based on what we know today. If the VAC is greater than zero, meaning a positive number, we expect the project will underrun the budget. If the VAC equals zero, we expect the project will complete on budget. If the VAC is less than zero, meaning a negative number, we expect the project will overrun the budget. The third idea in this group of four, estimate to complete. In my own words, how much more we estimate we need to spend over what we have spent to complete the project. And then the fourth idea, to complete performance index, may be the trickiest of all four of these ideas. The cost performance index required to complete the project within management mandates. If the TCPI is greater than one, we must achieve a better CPI than so far on the project. 
if the TCPI equals 1, we must achieve the same CPI at a minimum as so far on the project. If the TCPI is less than 1, we do not need to perform as well as performance has been to date on the project. To compare and contrast a couple ideas, a reminder, with CPI and SPI, indexes greater than 1 are good, indexes equal to 1 would mean on plan, indexes less than 1 that would be bad. With TCPI, index is greater than 1. A TCPI greater than 1 means we must perform better than we have been performing. So it's harder to achieve. An index equal to 1 means we must perform as well as we have been performing. An, in, an index less than 1, a TCPI less than 1, means we do not need to perform as well as we have been performing. So it's TCPI less than 1 is easier to achieve. Now let's move on and look at a whole group of sample questions to wrap up this video. The estimate at completion is 7,000. The budget at completion is 9,000. This means. Now before you get all wrapped up in earned value, make it simple. We estimate the whole project is going to cost 7,000. We have a budget of 9,000. Is that good or bad? I would say that's really good. What does it mean? It means we expect to come in under budget. A, the project is ahead of schedule. We don't know. B, the project is running over budget. I doubt it. B, the project is running under budget. I would assume this is true and that's why we expect to complete with $7,000 total even though we have a budget of 9,000. D, the project is behind the schedule. We have no idea. The estimate at completion is 7,000. The variance at completion is 2,000. Or I'm sorry, is negative 2,000. This means, and let me ask, is this about cost or schedule? It's about cost, and would you say it's good or bad? I would say it's bad. A variance of negative 2,000 means we expect to overrun by $2,000. A, the project is ahead of schedule. We have no idea. B, the project is running over budget. Yes, and we expect to overrun by $2,000. C, the project is running under budget. False. D, the project is behind schedule. We have no idea. The variance at completion is $7,000. This means, pause the video and answer the question. If the variance is a positive number, is this a good thing or a bad thing? It's a good thing. It means we expect to underrun. A, the project is ahead of schedule. We have no idea. B, the project is running over budget. No, false. See, the project is running under budget, yes, and that's why we expect to have a positive variance. D, the project is behind schedule, we have no idea. The estimate to complete is $7,000. This means, so ask yourself, what does ETC mean? It means we need to spend $7,000 more to finish the project. That's our estimate. A, the project is $7,000 over budget. We don't know. The project is $7,000 under budget. We don't know. C, you estimate you need $7,000 more than you have in your budget to complete the project. We don't know. All we know is that you estimate you need to spend $7,000 more than you have already spent to complete the project. This is what ETC means. The variance at completion for your project is 7,000. This means, pause the video. What does it mean to have a positive variance at completion? It means we expect to underrun. This is a good thing. 
A, the project is $7,000 over budget. No. B, is the right answer. We expect to underrun by 7,000. That's what a positive VAC means. C, you estimate you need 7,000 more than you have in your budget. We have no idea. That's not what VAC is about. D, you estimate you need 7,000 more than you have already spent to complete the project. Again, not what this question is about. And I want to be clear with C when I said that's not what VAC is about. What I really meant to say is that's not what a positive variance at completion is about. The estimate to complete is 7,000. This means, pause the video and answer the question. Again, remember, what does estimate to complete mean? Estimate to complete is our estimate of how much more we need to spend to complete the project. A, you expect to spend 7,000 more to complete the project than you have already spent. That's what it means. B, you expect to need 7,000 more added to your budget. No. C, you expect to underrun, you expect to overrun. That's not what ETC is about. ETC is how much more okay, do we expect to spend to be able to complete the project over what we've already spent. Your earned value expert announces that the current TCPI for the project is 1.3. This means, pause the video, so a TCPI greater than one is that easy to achieve or hard to achieve? Well, it's hard to achieve. A, you need to improve your cost performance on the project to meet management's mandates. A is true. This is bad or this is hard to do. B, you estimate you have 30% more money than required. B would be a good thing. That's not what a TCPI greater than one means. C, you expect the project will be 30% late. TCPI is about how much more money we need to spend. So C doesn't make sense here. D, you expect the project will underrun by 30%. Probably not because our TCPI is so high. That's a bad thing. Your earned value expert announced that the current TCPI for the project is 0.8. This means, pause the video and answer the question. A TCPI less than one, is that easier or harder to achieve compared to what we've already been doing? So a TCPI less than one is easier to achieve. A, the cost performance index required should be easier to achieve than originally planned. So A is true. B, it will be very difficult to meet the expectations of management. Well, we don't know, but since the TCPI is less than one, it should be easier than it's been so far. C, you have spent 80% of the total budget, nothing to do with the question. D, you have completed only 80% of the work that should be complete for the money spent. Okay. That's not what this TCPI is about. This TCPI is a good TCPI. If you like this video, go to my website. You can click on it below. Get on our mailing list for invites to free online training related to the PMP exam. Thank you.